How's it going? Joe here from Zilla Cabs, and today I'm joined uh, by Adam. Hello! <laughs> hey, Adam. Uh, Adam's down in Cornwall for a, for a little break, isn't it? A little getaway. Yeah, an excuse to come down and see Paul and Joe at Zilla. Yes. Yeah, so um, we're glad to have him along, and we thought it'd be a good excuse to do a, do a couple of videos today. So, um, so in this video, you might be able to tell behind us, <laughs> we've got a couple of 412s. Now these these are oversized Zilla four x twelves, and these are going to the guys from Conjurer, um, UK heavy band, um, who I'm sure a lot of you will have heard of. Um, so we thought let's just go all out, get a couple of Mesa Boogie heads, and set them up in stereo and see what happens. Yes, I mean there was a reason behind it though. I mean yeah. it's, we wanted to go silly, but uh, these two cabs they look similar. The speakers are completely different. Mm. Uh, which ones do we have? Uh, let me check. Let's have a look on the back. I can't remember which way around they are. So this cab has got the uh, H75s, and that cab has got the uh, H Heritage 55 hertz speakers. Heritage. Yeah. So are they 30 watt or was it 25 for the? Because I know that the the G12M Heritage is only 20 watts, so I don't know if it's. Uh, or I can't actually remember that off the top of my head. Um, Details down below. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> little... But yeah, that means this is only 100, 120 watt cab. Uh, that one's what, 300 watt cab. Mm. Not that that makes much of a difference to me, to be honest, because if you're actually playing anywhere near 100 watts out of a, a, a amp, you're going to die. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's to do with the handling of the low end and that kind of break up thing, isn't it? Definitely. We wanted to have a bit of a, a bit of a silly time and uh, playing glorious stereo, but also we can then isolate one and then the other to show you what sounds are independently of each other uh, by using exactly the same settings on these two Mesa Stiletto Deuce amps. So identical amps, identical settings. Uh, the only thing that is different is the speakers themselves. Mm. And I'm currently playing. Is this your PR? That's Paul's. That's yeah. Paul. Yes. Lovely. Custom 22, Custom so it gets a lot of use here in the studio. Yeah, it's a lovely guitar, and we're playing through uh, Joe's pedal board. Yeah, so um, regular viewers might know the setup here, but I've got Strymon Riverside, which I get a lot of my gain sounds from. And then after that, there's a few different gain pedals, but then after that point it goes into stereo, which, for, which is from the Strymon Flint for reverb, and then into a Boss DD8 delay. And the stereo mode I've got on the Boss pedal, it's not a direct ping pong left and right. It's, it does its own thing where it sort of sends a bit more left and right in different ways. I'm not sure how it does it, but um, it gives more of like a, a feeling of it going around you rather than just ping ponging sort of left and right. So. That's very cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'll try and play a little bit of something a bit, bit crunchy. In mm -hmm. fact, just for a minute, I'm gonna turn off the stereo on us just for a minute while yeah. we do the speaker comparisons. Yeah, oh, wrong way. Right. Cool. Right. So I'm going to play something a little bit crunchy. Let me just check Oops. these settings on the amp. I think we might be slightly different on these. So. Uh... Da, da, da. So hopefully you'll have heard a distinct difference there. I mean, they are from the same family though, aren't they? The, the green yeah, back. so like these speakers are all sort of come from the original Greenback really, the 20 watt speaker. And 
the, the lineage uh, sort of develops from that point as far as I'm aware. Uh, and then we're at the point now where they've picked off different points throughout their history and recreated those tones that they had at the time, I guess. So, um, mm. yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, so if I remember rightly, the heritage is more like the original, original. Mm -hmm. Trying as hard as they can to go back to that. Like a faithful reproduction almost, yeah. Yeah, and the cream back is the other way. That's like, let's try and kind of keep the tone, but make it a really high wattage. Yeah. Can't so, kill it. So like a, yeah, a modern improvement, if that's the right word on it. It's all subjective, yeah. but hopefully if you guys at home uh, are hearing the differences here, you'll know which one works better for you. Call Zilla, buy the one that works for you. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that was just using a bridge pickup and just, just getting some real kind of smack out of the, the riverside there. But if I just try a little bit more, get the flint on. And just do something with a little bit more of a bluesy kind. I'm so used to using these Jazz 3 metal picks that you can't help but play anything else with them, really. Right. There's a lovely um, like um, dynamic to the front of your notes there, which I guess is coming from the way you, you're a bass player, aren't you? Probably. I am, yeah. yeah. I'm kind of, I, when I'm finger picking, I do end up playing almost like a bass player. I get under the string and just kind of gently let it go rather than do the. It uh, gives it a nice string. bloom, though, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Surprising with this particular guitar, because usually when I play finger style, it's usually on a strat. Right. And that single coil thing just, I suppose I'm trying to tame that attack thing. Yeah. But on the PRS it is much softer. It's really nice, I like it. Cool. Should we swap places? Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a go on that same sound, Ben. through a pair of 412s for me. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a beast. It's, I don't know if it's because we swap places or because I'm not playing, but I'm finding that this one with the cream backs is hitting me a bit more with that low end. It's stiffer. Mm. I don't know if you're feeling a bit of less of that there. Uh, I don't know. I, my ears, right, um, this ear is worse for me. So I'm, I'm finding this one to be a bit more clearer, but maybe that's because I'm sat this side, I don't know. But. Right. <laughs> It's, it's funny what comes up, but yeah, I, I definitely am feeling in my gut more low from this, and hopefully the microphones will show that. But maybe not, maybe it's all in my head. Well, we try to be as, um, not scientific, but as fair as we can, haven't we? We've got the mics in roughly the same position, the amp set up the same, so... Um... Yeah, I mean, people are going to say things like, oh, well, every speaker's different, and you know, like, every amp's different. I mean, yeah, there are tolerant... There are tolerances though. Within reason, each speaker in a family should sound almost the same. Within reason, each amp in a series should sound pretty much the same. <laughs> uh, each microphone should sound pretty much the same. And there will be very, very small tolerances, but I mean, unless you are super hypercritical, I would, I would argue that the difference in these speakers will be much more than any differences between two of the same type of mic right. or amp. All right, let's take the gain up a little bit then. Yeah, happens. let's do it.
Woo! <laughs> loud. Very loud. <laughs> I was noticing, because I can see the levels over there, that one of the two cabinets is slightly louder than the other in terms of just the sheer waveform. Mm. I wonder if we're going to hear that on playback, whether that's just more low end, because low end tends to represent as a bigger waveform. Yeah, I forget um, off the top of my head the efficiency ratings of these speakers as well. So um, we might have that one is one speaker is more efficient than the, than the other, mm. which will mean that the cab is louder than the other given the same input signal being put in. Yes. Yeah. So um, generally speaking, if you're only using one cab live, that's neither here nor there. Right. Is it? But yeah, when you're trying to match them, it is. It yeah. can be an issue. I found that issue before with trying to match things like a Vintage 30 and a Greenback M, that there's a big difference. Yeah. Uh, in the studio, it's not so much of an issue because I can turn the gain up on the quiet one, but mm -hmm. live you do lose the character of the less loud mm -hmm. one. But again, these two cabinets weren't actually built for the stereo thing. These are actually no. built for a band for, for two guitarists. That's right, yeah. So if one is slightly quiet in the other, they'll just turn the master up by a hair, yeah. and that'll work out absolutely fine. And also sometimes, even though the, the dials say they're in the same place, maybe the, the pot is slightly shifted over in the chassis or something like that. And yeah. yeah. And uh, you would hope that that would be such a small difference. <laughs> but it's, it's worth talking about because yeah. it is entirely possible that these small things all add up to something larger. But we would hope that those variables are fairly even. <laughs> yeah, right. But you never know. It's, it is worth saying that, that this isn't a scientific comparison. This is just to give you guys an idea of what's going on and give us an excuse to play with a wonderful <laughs> stereo beast. Cool. Uh, right, let's do some more gain then, I guess. More gain and stereo? Yeah. Deafening, all the rest. Don't try this at home. Do try this at home. Buy these cabs. Do this yourself. And then don't try it at home. Maybe try it at practice room. Yeah, right. I could play that all day. Um, yeah, that's the sort of sound I love. Um, yeah, what else is there to say about that, really? Just, Just go out and get them. <laughs> and get yourself a couple of uh, mesas to go with, maybe. <laughs> so Conjurer are... Uh, they're like a super heavy, down-tuned, modern, high-gain sounding band. Um, so let's see if we can achieve some of that here, shall we? Do you want with the with the heads. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. I'll
monster, monster, monster. <laughs> so, uh, there, split them on standby. What? <laughs> so these amps are kind of classic marshals in wolf's clothing, sheep's clothing. What's the way of saying that? In Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they, they give that yeah they give that classic Marshall kind of sound really I think uh, um, but with more gain on tap um, so not not quite the sort of full on fifty one fifty metal territory there or rectifier but I think that's a really usable metal sound in all honesty um, oh yeah yeah not like mega over the top saturated just like roaring. Yeah, on a, on a, a lot of metal albums, I would probably blend a channel of that with a channel of, of the really saturated-y overkill thing, because mm. that is definition for days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's down to the guitarist to be able to play like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this has been a really fun chance for me to, to plug in a, a big rig, and um, yeah, that's, that's always, always fun. And uh, thanks for Adam for helping us through it as well. Anytime. And... If you're new around here, please uh, consider hitting the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon for notifications when we bring out new videos. And leave us a comment below. Um, let us know what you thought of this video. And we'll catch you again very soon. Cheers.